So using this kind of tool, we can very, very quickly do some basic testing on the application to see if there are flaws. Of course, this application has the flaws built into it. They're designed in. But it's not unique in having these kinds of problems. Let me show you just one or two other things that you can do with Web Scarab that are very powerful for doing some fast testing on our applications. Here in Web Scarab, among the other options that are up on the top here, we have one that's called Session ID Analysis. This is an incredibly valuable feature. Uh, now, there are some tools that do some more advanced testing than what Web Scarab is doing, but as a first test, this is a phenomenal tool to use. What this tool allows us to do is take a look at what's happening with our session IDs that are being generated in our web applications and to see whether or not they're appropriate. One of the things that we spend a lot of time talking about in the 507 class and that we touch on briefly in the 521 class is the matter of having a strong session ID. Well, we can check out and see how strong the session ID is. To do it, let me go back over to the, um, to the summary page. And what I'm looking for is something very particular. I'm going to take a look over here. I'm sorry, uh, let me switch that back so that we're sorted by time. I'm going to take a look over here at one of the other columns. Notice there's a whole bunch of columns that show you the kind of data that's going back and forth. For instance, it notes a page that might have a possible injection flaw, pages where cross-site scripting may be possible. Uh, but over here, we've got a set cookie field. Now that's what I'm looking for because on this particular application, let me open up this conversation. In this conversation, you can see that in the response down here, we have a set cookie field. That set cookie is going to set a cookie on the client. And in this particular case, notice the name of it. The name is session ID. So here is how the session is being tracked. One of the many ways that can be used is using cookies. And that's the case here. Now, what I want to take note of is, the conversation number. This is conversation number 10. I can see it here, and it's also listed on the top. In this page back over here, I can also see it's, it's conversation number 10. The reason I want that information is because that's where the session ID is set, and what I'd like to do is, instead of building a request by hand, I'd like to just pull down this pull-down menu here and choose conversation number 10. And what I'm telling it is, send this request, the request that was sent in conversation 10, and what you should get back is a session ID. Well, let's test it out. I'll click the test button, and it comes back and tells me, hey, I found a session ID. There it is. Web Scarab is very, very good at finding session IDs and cookies. You can also find session IDs using things right out of the body. So we could turn this on, give it a name, and to find a regular expression to go and extract it out of the body of the response. For instance, maybe it's in a hidden form field, so we could find it there too. In this case, we're just going to deal with the one we have. There is one last thing I'd like to do, though. Notice that this session ID ends in a 606. What I'd like to do is just test again and make sure I'm going to get a different session ID, because sometimes we'll do this and we'll actually end up with the same session ID again and again because perhaps the session ID was already set and now it's just being sent back to us. So I want to make sure it actually changes. So I'll click test and I get 65, so it's different. That's perfect. So with that set, I'm now going to configure this to go and grab, let's say, 200 session IDs. And I'm going to click the fetch button. Now when I click fetch, nothing happens on this page. But if you look under the analysis page, we can now pull down and select that session ID, and we can see, actually you can see the scroll bar changing, it is going and getting session IDs. And if we go to visualization, we can see what those session IDs look like over time. Now what we'd be looking to see for a strong session ID, we'd like to see random values, which means that these would be spread all over completely random. Well, what are we seeing? Instead, we're seeing steps in fact, it looks like we get a new session ID every second, and they're all increasing. So this is a time-based session ID. This is extremely poor. Now, like I said, there are other tools that are more advanced for doing this kind of testing. But just as an example for a quick test, so we can tell easily if there's an obvious problem, this is a phenomenal way to see what kind of problems we might have with session IDs. So that's it for our demonstration today. If you'd like some more information, feel free to write me. I'd be happy to point you at some of the SANS classes that can help you. Or if you're a student, I'd be happy to help